Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Sean. I produce under the name Psycho Callus, and this is the first and hopefully many um, tutorial videos that I'm going to post on my YouTube. I thought I'd make this tutorial and start making more tutorials on um, issues that I run into personally. The biggest thing I've always struggled with, uh, no matter what song, what genre, whatever, the biggest thing I've ever struggled, I've always struggled with is making super wide, super saw synths that collapses down to mono pretty well. Uh, it is possible. I've heard it. It is very possible. But I have struggled uh, for my entire... Uh, right now, I've been producing for about five years. And I have just struggled and struggled. I've found uh, my own ways of kind of getting around it. Uh, figuring out what works, what doesn't. I thought I'd share that with you today. And I personally use um, Reason. This is Reason 10.4. If you don't use Reason, if you use Ableton, Cubase, FL, what have you, um, the same kind of synthesis and uh, processing ideas still apply. Before I dive into like creating um, the Super Saws, I'm going to take care of some kind of prerequisite stuff that I think is important and I think everyone should kind of know. First things first is having the stereo imager right here. It's this guy. And what's cool about stereo imager is you can kind of separate it into the low and high band and you have your crossover. I like to have my crossover around like 350, 300, 350-ish. Uh, so you'll mostly be looking at the high band because anything under 300 really should be kind of mono. You don't want like stuff down there super wide because it's going to completely disappear when you collapse it to mono. Uh, so using the stereo imager is pretty important and I use it pretty frequently. Next, um, right below it, you'll see I have something called Core Relation. It's made by Reasonistas. You can get it on the Reason shop. I highly recommend it. It costs this much as of this recording. And I think it was a pretty good deal, honestly. The reason why I got it is one you have a global width knob which we'll get into in a bit but the main thing is it has this phase meter right here so the phase meter will tell you how in phase something is and how dramatically it's going to collapse down to mono if it usually if it's like kind of around um say a third of the way from zero into the green you're okay. If it dips anywhere into the red, not okay. So the closer, obviously the closer to one, the better. However, also the closer to one, the more mono it typically is. You know, uh, you want to get it as far into the green as you can, but just know that super saws by nature are never really going to collapse to mono uh, perfectly. And the reason is um, it, really relies on phase differences so it's never gonna collapse completely perfectly but yeah i i love having this thing because you can have it folded in the session and you can still see the phase meter which is all i really need to see that's the main reason why i bought it now something i learned early on is how to kind of set up a quick mono switch um in your session so i use the correlation again so it's going going back to the global width. It's set to 100% right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can, at the flick of a switch, bring that all the way down to zero. So what you're going to do is this is your master section right here. So you're going to click show programmer. You're going to click that little down arrow box there. And here you got your programmer. Buttons right here is what you want to focus on. Um, so if we go back to our mixer, which is F5, those four buttons and the knobs are right here in your master inserts, um, which if you look in this very bottom right corner, it's really small, but the INS, uh, which is short for inserts, so that has to be highlighted blue uh, to show them. And you got them right here, and those correspond to those buttons and knobs. So what you're going to do is you're going to Go into your devices here. As you can see, I got a shit ton. I called this mono view because that's what it is, but it'll be like the correlation name. So you go to button four and you pick the global width of the drop down menu right there. And then you set the minimum to 100. Minimum is when the button is unpressed. 
and then maximum to 0%, which is when the button is pressed in. So when you go and hit the button, it takes the global width of everything going through it and collapses it to mono. So yeah, right up there. Comes in pretty handy. I use it a lot. The last thing I'm going to talk about before we get into like building the synths and shit is listen to professional tracks and use and use that mono button trick and just flick it on and off when there's a super saw and collapse it to mono and see how it collapses. Also, pay attention to how wide it sounds to you on your monitoring source, whether that's headphones or if you got speakers. So pay attention to how wide it sounds and how it's collapsing to mono. And don't don't just do this to one track. Do this to many tracks. Do like five, seven, ten. Do it to a lot of tracks because not every super saw in professional tracks will collapse uh, very nicely. Some will collapse um, pretty well. And for those, pay attention to how wide it actually is. Um, if it's really wide, it most likely will collapse not very well, uh, as as has been my experience with the tracks that I have. Okay, now let's get into making the synths. The first synth that we're going to get into is Subtractor. Subtractor is a good synth. Uh, it's the first reason synth. Open up the filter all the way, turn up the decay and sustains. <laughs> hold out notes indefinitely. But those of you who have been in Reason for long enough know that Subtractor is mono. The easiest way to remedy this is actually the, the stock Reason Unison, uh, just how it is now. It's wide, but it's a little too swimmy, uh, if, if that makes sense at all. So it's pretty wide. Uh, I'm going to back off the dry wet, back this down to like, 32 and that's a little better not as swimmy yeah it would sound better for a lead i think um maybe if you're doing the higher octave chords it'd sound better let's that sounds a little better uh in mono Yeah, that sounds pretty good. The main thing you want to shoot for in uh, stuff collapsing to mono is that it sounds the same. If it sounds very different, like you lose a lot of mids or you lose a lot of high end when it collapses to mono, that's, um, to me, a bigger problem than it getting quieter. It's always going to get quieter when it goes to mono. In my experience, it's always gotten quieter when it collapses to mono. I would use that, and I actually have used this exact same technique for... Um, uh, leads and risers and songs before because of the nature of the unison how it kind of randomly detunes it's gonna have uh, an older sound more 80s sound so it's not gonna be very ideal for a modern edm banger that might not be the sound you're going for but it's a start the next synth we're gonna look at is maelstrom i do not like using maelstrom to create super saws because it collapses to mono very poorly. It is it's just wild how quiet it collapses. And I know I said that, like, don't worry too much about get, it getting quiet, but there is a point where it is too much, and it's, it's really bad. Um, uh, I'm going to build a, the, a wide super saw real quick in Maelstrom, and I'll show you how. Uh, first things first, you need to activate oscillator B. Then you're going to go go into the wave section of the oscillators, and you're going to pick Sawtooth 16 for both of the oscillators. So have 16 means 16 voices, by the way. It's a lot of voices. But what you're going to do next is you're going to route oscillator A here that button which sends it through to filter a oscillator b is going to go to this bottom button which goes to filter b x uh will open up the filters all the way and select keyboard tracking for both of the filters so that they follow the keys still mono because i haven't spread it yet uh which is 
what this knob here does right above the volume knob, you spread it. And let's just dial it up halfway. Does nothing. Here's why. They are, these are wavetables and they are the exact same wavetable. So if they're exactly the same, it's still gonna sound mono. So you need to make a change in one of them. And it's very easy to do. You can either do shift, motion, or you can just detune or tune one of them. One cent, one cent does a lot. Like I'll just do one cent and it's wide as hell. If you have good ears, you'll hear the phasing. Like there's some crazy phasing going on in there. And let's take a look at the phase meter here. You saw it dipping into the red a bit, but it kind of like balanced out. Um, so this might be okay. Check it in mono. That's really phasey. That's, that's really bad. Might not be the way to go. The way I've mostly tried to do it with Maelstrom is changing the motion a little bit. So let's change it by five. And that sounds a lot more natural to me. Check it in mono. You know what? I retract my statement. That's not bad. I'd say that's workable. I would actually even turn down the, the spread a little bit. Yeah, I retract my statement. Maelstrom's okay. Still not the biggest fan of it, of it uh, for other reasons. The last synth we're going to work with today is going to be Thor. I love this synth a lot just because it's so flexible. It can do so many things, and I it finds its way into every single session I do. I could fawn over this all day, but let's get into making a nice sawtooth synth out of this. If you're new to Reason, you might not have noticed this before because it's written kind of small, but there are instructions on the back of Thor, which is really cool because it gives you some ideas for how you can, like, uh, make things happen that you want to do. But what we want to focus on right now is the true stereo synthesis part. And that's really small to read, so I'm just going to walk you through it. <laughs> so yeah, first things first is you're going to take oscillator one and two right here, and you're going to change them to the multi oscillator. Don't worry about them right now. Uh, one is going to go to this filter. Two only is going to go to this filter and it's going to be a low pass ladder like filter one now you're going to take both of them you're going to open up the filters all the way don't worry about these first two knobs envelope and velocity sensitivity uh, i recommend uh, opening up the keyboard tracking all the way open up the amp envelopes decay and sustain all the way so you can just hold out notes indefinitely oh and Last thing, take this filter two and send it to the amp. And that's kind of basically it that you have to do there. The next part is all gonna be uh, modulation uh, routing down here. So you're gonna take filter one, this guy up here, you're gonna route it to filter three, left in, and kind of do the same thing with filter two going into filter three's right in. Uh, the instructions on the back say to do 75, so we'll we'll start there. Uh, this next part is really important because it's not gonna play right if you don't do it. You want to send both of those lines to your amp envelope. I almost forgot, before you hit the keys on that, go to your master volume knob and turn it down to about 12 o'clock because this is really loud. Pretty good. How wide is it on the stereo imager here? It's about halfway to where we need to be. And I'm going to show you how to tweak this a little bit more to get a little bit wider out of it. So there, I prefer using the random uh, setting for the detune mode. There's actually two of these. Um, I like to set one of them to random two. And I like setting this filter to 24 type one. It's a slightly different sounding filter. And uh, let me play it. 
And if your ears are good enough, you can kind of hear the difference between them. So to kind of balance that out, I bring up this filter resonance to like five. And it's a little closer. What you can mess with is the detune amount. Um, leaving them uh, standard at 24 is actually pretty good. They sound pretty natural. Don't sound too like weird. Yeah. They sound good. Uh, one more thing you can do, if you so like to, detune the oscillators against each other. So, hell, take this 15, take this, go to 10, and get a really detuned sound. And we're still only halfway to like where we need to be. You come down to the modulation matrix and crack these all the way up to 100. And that gets us quite a bit closer to where we need to be, honestly. You could, uh, let's take this, bring that detune up a little bit more. That's uh, pretty close, but we're still not quite to as wide as, um, as personally I would like. So this is where we get into third-party things. I personally hate using the stereo imager the stock stereo imager to widen things i dislike it sorry reason but it does an awful job it makes it wide but forget about mono uh compatibility there are better ones and i'm going to show you them if you're not on uh reason nine and a half or higher on like reason eight or seven or even five i recommend using the kilohertz stereo it's not bad. Um, it's pretty dang simple. It's really light on CPU and stack. You can stack these up as much as you want. They're great. Let's have a listen as I widen it just a, just just a little bit. So I widen it by what is this? Thirty six percent from one hundred to one hundred thirty six, and it gets you. There. And in mono. And you're kind of hearing the it's the oscillators being set. Back that off a bit. Yeah, it's kind of dancing between the green and red, so you can back it off a little bit to like uh, I don't know one uh, around one. That's fine. And that's perfect. It stays mostly in the green, so we know it's going to be okay. I hope you're taking notes. I hope you're following along at home. Uh, leave a comment. Leave a like. Uh, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any other ideas. Let me know. Peace.